My name's Carrie Wooten and this is James Uren and we're the co-directors of 3D Storytelling. We're absolutely delighted that we've been able to put this conference on again and we're really excited about the programme that we have lined up for you over the next couple of days. Please remember that there are sessions happening across the building throughout the day from level four down to the ground floor and we have a live performance outside at quarter to 12 where we will be um, having some dancers and that footage is going to be captured into the teleogenic 3D OB truck which is parked just alongside the building there so do go and have a look at that as well throughout the next couple of days. I'd like to thank our funder skill set for helping us to put on this event and also our sponsors and they include Real D, Sony, Onsite, Deluxe Digital London, Dimension Media, SGO, Stage Electrics, Royal Borough of Greenwich, Colourset, Ogilvy and GSS. I'd also like to thank our media partner, Screen International, and our event partners, Sky 3D, Vision 3, Women in Film and Television, and Film Club. James. Uh, yeah, hi, I'm James. Um, we named this event 3D Storytelling because we noticed uh, that there are only a handful of companies that were really pushing the limits of 3D creatively. Uh, if 3D is really to become mainstream, uh, and we, we really, really want it to, uh, then it needs to be embraced at the most fundamental level of everything we do which is storytelling, cross-genre and cross-platform. Ravensbourne and Film Club recently conducted a large survey of the younger generation of audiences, Generation 3D, and over the next few days, we'll be exploring these results and the challenges that have emerged. The event will close with the highlights from this study, and we hope, that, uh, and we hope we'll help you to go on to create your own 3D stories. So just one final thing from us. Um, We'd like to do a massive thank you to all of the staff and particularly the students that have been involved in this event. They've been working really exceptionally hard over the last few days and weeks and months. And without them, this event literally just could not happen. So um, a really massive thank you from James and I. Thank you for the applause. They, they deserve it. They've done an amazing, amazingly well. Um, really hope you enjoy the event. We really look forward to catching up with you during the next couple of days. Do come find us and say hello. We'll be wandering around, I'm sure. And um, now I'd just like to pass over to Alison Small from Skillset. Thank you. Thanks, Carrie. Good morning. I'm Alison Small. I'm the director of the Skillset Craft and Technical Skills Academy, and we're delighted to be supporting this event. I know the feedback from last year's conference was excellent, and looking at this year's lineup of speakers and companies involved, I'm confident that this is going to be just as stimulating. We've got some of the most prominent and talented 3D professionals in the world here, so this is an excellent opportunity for us all to exchange ideas and knowledge. And one of the Skillset Film Fund's priorities is training in new technologies. And so to this end, the team have been researching and monitoring the impact 3D has had on the filmmaking process from development through to production, distribution and exhibition. Our aim over the last two years has been to ensure that we have world-class 3D skills here in the UK, both to produce our own brilliant 3D content, but also to service productions coming in from abroad. So Skillset has been running a slate of 3D training, both in London and outside in the regions, and getting crew placed on 3D productions to learn on the job. And the details of some of the most recent training can be found in your bags, just next to the 3D glasses. Um, we will be funding more. We'll be listening intently over the next couple of days to help us to determine where there are still skills gaps um, and creative gaps, and where training is still needed. So, I hope you have a brilliant couple of days and that you can get to as many of the sessions as you possibly can. Thank you. Oh, well, again, good morning. My name is Jeremy Barr, and I'm proud to be the visiting professor broadcasting and convergent media at uh, Ravensbourne. Proud because Ravensbourne is a place that regards itself as being at uh, the lead in two distinct ways. One in terms of research, the second in terms of research which is useful and therefore needs to be and is linked with the whole industrial and commercial world. I've got a few messages I have to share with you before we begin our first session. They're the boring but very necessary messages. The first is in the unlikely event of there being any kind of an emergency, uh, there are clearly marked fire exits at the back there and there 
and please depart in the calm and orderly manner that I know uh, you will. Second, can you please make sure that you do have your mobiles set in a way that will not distract the session in any fashion? Uh, Carrie has mentioned we have a great many events taking place in parallel with the events here in the Walker space. Most of those are on the second floor of this building. In particular, I'd mention the research room, room 211, where later this morning at 10.45, we have a live link with Tomsk University. Um, so please look again at your programs and think where you would like to most beneficially use the time. The other thing I have to say is that uh, we have got all sorts of help from industry, and uh, a lot of that is manifest, but again, I want to repeat what Carrie and James have said. We are immensely grateful for the support and enthusiasm uh, that we have, as well as that crucial strategic underpinning uh, role uh, skill set offers us. Um, a few other key householding events. I'm going to ask, uh, please, that you do leave uh, this space at the end of the event, we do have a very short amount of time to reset before the uh, next event. Uh, so if we can leave as rapidly as possible. Um, I am going to run to time because I've been asked to and we have an awful lot of sessions crowded in and I know we're beginning a little bit late. Um, in terms of other places to go, please visit the trade show on the fourth floor of this building. Uh, tea and coffee is also available on that floor. Um, also to mention Screen International, delighted to say give a discount available to all delegates using hashtag hash 3DS12, 3DS12. There's a gaming tournament, so anyone who's up for prizes, uh, there's a trophy to win for the quickest time. Specifically today, uh, in addition to the live link with Tomsk University, um, we have um, a live performance with Telegenic, delighted for their help, we have an OB truck, 3D OB truck, uh, and that performance commences at 11.45. And we have quite a short lunch break, and uh, there are a lot of places in the O2 and round the corner uh, of this um, building, including the Cafe Rouges and uh, coffee places. So please avail yourself of the, the place which is most useful to you. We are, as I say, going to run to time. The only other thing I want to say at this point is uh, one of the joys of my job is um, helping uh, technology students with some of their dissertations. And I have been very struck with a number of students who said, 3D matters. It matters because it's my future. It matters because it's the future of the industry in a very significant way. And therefore, that confluence between why do people come and get an education and where might they be going in terms of an industry is absolutely made manifest in what we do. The other thing is, I don't think any of us should refer to each other as colleagues. This is too exciting. We're shock workers, to use that old term. We are changing things in interesting ways. And as has been said, this is the second conference. The first one was fantastic in terms of the amount of willingness for people to share ideas. This one, I believe, thanks to your participation, our speakers is going to be even better. And on that note, would you please join me in welcoming our first speaker from Sky, uh, who is John Casey, who's head of Sky uh, 3D. Please join me in welcoming him. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, thank you, Alison, and thank you, Carrie. Um, uh, I'm really pleased to be here today because I think that what Ravensbourne does and what Skillset are doing in partnership with them is, is fundamentally important for the whole TV industry, but also for the future development of 3D. And I think you only need to look at the program that's been put together over the, the next couple of days to see that uh, the storytelling conference really gets it. You know, there are a lot of conferences out there, and I think some of them are of very mixed quality. But what this one does is it balances the importance of technology, the importance of thinking, the importance of planning, but also the importance of creativity and storytelling. So I just think it's a really, really good thing, and I hope you guys get a lot out of it, and, and thank you for the invite. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about what we've been doing at Sky. Um, also, what we think is happening in the wider world of 3D, because there's been a lot written and a lot said about 3D, which I think it's fair to say it's had a fairly mixed 12 months if you look at the press coverage. But also, I think there's quite a lot of myths out there, and I think it's time to debunk some of those and really understand what is actually happening. 
So that's what I want to talk to you guys about. I'm also happy to take questions at the end. But I thought, before I actually get on to talking and the dreaded PowerPoint, which I promise I will keep as short as possible, um, I thought we might as well watch some 3D. So if you wanted to sort of look into your bags, get your glasses, I will then ask if we run a quick take. Um, the other thing to remember is that when we, as a business, launched High Definition in the UK, that was, I think it was 2005, six, and I was, I was part of a, of a big team that um, was lucky enough to be involved in that project. And when we launched it, we didn't know where it was going to go. We had forecasts, we, know we had plans, but actually no one really knew. And there were a lot of big questions at the time about were we going to make it, did Britain really need HD, fine, it was working in America, but their picture quality was terrible, blah, blah, blah. Um, and there were a lot of naysayers saying, why would people buy HD? Well, today, actually, I think it's more difficult to buy a standard definition television than an HD TV. And we as a business have over 50, so that's five zero, 50 HD TV channels operating on our platform with a very large number of our customers, I think in excess of 4 million homes in the UK, paying us an extra 10 pounds a month to access those channels. So that is a pretty substantial business. You know, we're, we're pleased with its progress. Um, now, where 3D goes, whether it matches that, I don't think anybody knows. Um, I think it'll be a complement to, to HD rather than a replacement. But a lot of the people who've perhaps had a knock of 3D in the last year or so were the people who said that HD would never work as well. So it'll be just interesting to see where we get to. Um, now, in terms of movies, well, the last, I'd say, 12 to 24 months have been a pretty extraordinary time for the Hollywood movie industry. And while I'm here to talk to you more about what's happening in Britain, we can't escape the Hollywood angle here. Um, in many ways, Avatar was perhaps the very best and also the worst thing that could have happened to 3D in terms of expectations. Uh, Avatar was extraordinary in terms of a creative product, in terms of a financial product, in terms of something that changed the boundaries of how people watch film. Um, it wasn't an accident. James Cameron spent many, many years trying to create that film. He developed unique technology, and he invested, well, his partners invested hundreds of millions of dollars, right? This was a very well-planned, very well-created film, um, and it deservedly did amazingly. Since then, however, quite a few films have come out where people literally smelt the money around Avatar and thought, hmm, I'd like a bit of that. And they went on to create films which frankly just weren't up to scratch. They didn't have the storytelling, they didn't have the directors, the stereographers, all the ingredients that makes a great film really great. And I think that that has not helped 3D. Um, people jump on bandwagons whenever there's a new technology. But I think we're seeing the end of that time when basically poorly post-converted films or at least poorly created 3D films are being given wide releases. And the reasons why I'm encouraged is you just look at some of the films coming up over the next few months. First of all, um, Spider-Man here. I mean, it's, um, there are some very good early reports of what Spider-Man is going to be like. We don't know yet, but the feeling in the industry is it's going to be a very, very strong film. Um, Earlier, well, last year, we had Steven Spielberg make his first, first foray into 3D. Now, it's great to see directors of Spielberg's caliber coming into this space. Um, he's not the only one. We've, of course, seen Hugo. Now, I don't know how many of you in the room have seen Hugo, but Scorsese, I think, really had pushed the boundary in terms of live-action filmmaking for 3D. And, you know, it's, it's, it's an astonishing film. In fact, the International 3D Society, which Sky and a number of um, different organizations are members of, uh, held an awards in Los Angeles back in January, and Scorsese accepted the Special Achievement Award. And his speech was so passionate about the potential, and in particular, the creative potential of 3D as a device, that it was like, almost like watching a kind of a schoolboy with a new bag of sweets. I mean, he just absolutely loves it. So that was very encouraging to see. Similarly, later this year, we have The Hobbit, Peter Jackson, um, next Lord of the Rings installation. Um, sorry, so we've got some big, big directors coming on board, which is fantastic. Now, in terms of what's happening in television, so we go out and ask our customers, um, What's the most popular? What, what, do you, what do you want to watch? What are you watching? Now, quite often, when you ask people what they are watching, and then when you research it and see what they're actually watching, is different. So quite often, you know, typically people will say, oh, yes, I got Sky because I wanted to watch the nature documentaries, but actually they're watching The Simpsons or whatever it may be. Um, but 
Uh, these are the genres that are really driving the growth of 3D. So we talked a bit about movies. Um, Sport is another very big part of what we're doing. And for those of you around this afternoon, I would absolutely encourage you to go to the session that my colleague Steve Smith is doing on sports production in 3D. Um, Steve is about as experienced a 3D director as anybody in the world. He is immensely passionate, he's immensely articulate, and the session he'll do is, is fascinating for anybody involved in the creation of TV, no matter whether you're into films, factual, sport, whatever. It's just a really, really good session. Um, we've done pushing 200 live sports events now, which is a very significant number. Um, we are getting better all the time. We know we can get better still. We've made lots of mistakes. We're learning from them, but we're continuing to try and push the boundaries. And in that tape you saw earlier, there are a couple of clips of um, uh, the Champions League final at Wembley last May. And... Um, I think that was taken, by 19, taken live by 19 different broadcasters around the world in 3D. So it shows that the market is really developing internationally. Uh, natural history is the genre that comes in third in terms of what people watch and what people like and value. Um, we have done a fair bit. What we have done is we've done it at a very high end. So I'll talk a little bit more about our partnership with Atlantic Productions and our new, new joint venture called Colossus. But again, there is a session later this day um, later today around um, a new show that we are putting out uh, at the end of May called The Kingdom of Plants. And it's um, once again presented by David Attenborough. But I absolutely encourage you guys to go and listen to that session again because Anthony and his team have absolutely pushed the boundaries on what 3D can do. I mean, some of the footage is just sensational. And, you know, friends of mine uh, have become bemused by how I enthuse about what a daffodil looks like on television, you know. But it Believe me, it just looks amazing. So it's well worth, well worth seeing. We've also co-produced with companies like um, Oxford Scientific, who are a very well-established, um, high-caliber natural history filmmaking company. We did a Meerkat show, which you saw earlier, and we've got more on the way. Um, general factual is an area that we're doing quite a lot of as well, and kids programming is an area that we're starting to look at, but that's generally gonna be around animation and generally in partnership with channels like Nickelodeon. So in terms of anybody in the room who is looking to get commissioned by Sky, um, it's a question we get asked a lot. I get endless emails from people who are really enthusiastic and wanting to know, how do I get a show on air? Well, it's very simple, but you have to kind of follow this plan, right? Is basically, we are looking where at all possible for shows that can work in 2D as well as 3D. So that means they can run on Sky 1 as well as Sky 3D or on Sky Arts as well as Sky 3D. So in that um, tape, you saw clips of the recent final of Got to Dance, which was um, it's the big uh, dance show that's on Sky 1. We did the final of that live in 3D. It was a simultaneous transmission in both 2D and 3D, and it enables us to kind of reach the biggest possible audience to cross-promote it, and all those other very important things that you, you need to do to make a successful TV network. Um, so once you have your idea, what you need to do is get in touch with the relevant genre commissioning editor at Sky. So if it's a comedy idea, you need to go to Lucy Lumsden, who's our head of comedy. If it's factual, it's a lady called Celia Taylor, and so on and so on. And if you go through the Sky website, um, that's how you get in touch with them, basically. And you know, some of you may already have those relationships, but if you don't, uh, you need to go through the website, and the sorts of things that they will be looking for are the quality of the idea, your ability to deliver it. So, you know, in, with the greatest respect, if you are an individual with a great idea, no matter how good the idea is, they're not going to take you that seriously. They will need to know that you have teamed up with an independent production company with an ability to deliver the show to them. But, you know, if, if that is the case and it's an idea we love, then we will look at it very seriously indeed. So that's kind of the way to go about trying to get shows on air. And we would absolutely encourage ideas because we are looking for more great British programming. Um, so what are we going to be doing over the next, well, up until Christmas? Now, we've got a lot on. Um, quite a lot of what we're doing we haven't yet announced, but here are some uh, examples of some of the things we're going to be doing. Uh, in a couple of weeks' time, a couple of weeks time, we are going to the, the US Masters uh, for one of the biggest golf tournaments in the world, and that will look uh, 
amazing. And I will show you just at the end a quick tape of um, what it looks like. I've mentioned briefly Kingdom of Plants, which we think will be a game changer in terms of factual 3D television programming. Uh, Heineken Cup final for rugby fans out there in May. Uh, May is actually a very, very busy month for us. We have uh, on Sky Sports what we call month of finals. It's the culmination of rugby, football, all sorts of different leagues coming together. So we'll also show Champions League final, the Premiership running, you know, big events. Um, as part of our uh, work around the, the Royal Jubilee celebrations, uh, Trevor MacDonald is presenting a show that we've co-produced with History Channel in the UK, uh, and that's looking at the, you know, the Queen's life, looking back at some of the original 3D footage around coronation, and um, just looking forward. So that, I think, will be very, very good. Um, come August, we have a, a big new commission called Storm City, which is fronted by Ben Fogel. Uh, and then later in the year, we are looking at um, Horse of the Year show again, which is um, something that worked very well for us, and also uh, Galapagos, which I'm personally very, very excited about. Uh, you know, Galapagos is a place, the Galapagos Islands are a place which, for most of us, we're never, ever going to get there. I mean, it's this extraordinary kind of e ecosystem which has been kind of almost untouched by kind of human interference and you can get incredibly close to the animals and the, the variety is astonishing and um, David is um, you know going to go back to well he's actually going and I mean, we were filming at the moment he's out there I think in a month or two uh, and I think that the result of that short series will be astonishing so those are things that we're doing coming up um, now a lot of 3D is about partnership and you know, we, we recognize that we can't do this alone and we are absolutely partnering with the right people. Now, we partner where at all possible with key pay TV brands, right? You know, we are a pay TV operator and we're interested in growing the best possible experience for customers who choose to pay us a subscription fee each month. They're not obliged to pay us. If they don't want us anymore, they can phone us and cancel us. So we have to be absolutely on our toes and we have to give them television that is completely worth paying for. And so what we're doing is we are partnering as well with a lot of the brands and channel providers that people really love. So for example, Discovery, a huge, very successful factual program maker. We have a deal with them and a regular slot on the channel, which provides a whole range of 3D programming, which is incredibly well received. Um, it's, and they've, they've recently done a great series around behind the scenes at Woburn Safari Park, which people loved. And there's a lot of good stuff coming up this year. We also have a partnership with History Channel, which includes things like the, the Trevor McDonald, um, show and some other shows coming up later this year. And with Nat Geo, we've partnered on the Meerkats project and we've got some other programs as well coming up. So what we're looking to do is kind of encourage those guys to, to get into the 3D space and really kind of develop the market. And it's interesting that, you know, these three are ultimately American-owned organizations, but most, with the exception of Discovery, who have a big investment and a very good 3D channel in the States, most of these guys are making their first steps in HD in the UK. And particularly if you take history and the Trevor McDonald project, this is the second project for a very small UK production company. In fact, they're based on Jersey. Um, the guy uh, who did it is a man called Alistair Lazell. The production company's Colonial Pictures. And he did a previous series for us called Treasure Houses of Britain, fronted here by Selena Scott. And the reason why I talk about Alistair is that you do not have to be a multinational or a super indie to do 3D properly. Alistair has shown that by being nimble but by being, and by being creative and also by being commercially creative, uh, you can make great 3D programming. Now, what I mean by commercially creative is obviously if you want to get a show on air, you've got to find a way to fund it. You've got to attract broadcasters to pay your bills. And Alistair put together a model which included Sky, History Channel, DirecTV, who are a big American satellite broadcaster, PBS, which is the kind of sort of equivalent to the BBC in the States, but obviously not as good, um, and also working with Sky Art. So he put together this deal, which you know, is not always that easy, but he managed it. He doesn't have armies of lawyers or production managers or whatever. He just made it happen. He, he basically he got off his ass and he made it happen. And I think that his attitude is absolutely exemplary. And I think that it's, it shows that you do not have to you know, have an army of people with you to make these things work. And we will continue to back people like Alistair because they're entrepreneurial, they're creative, and that's what we're looking for. Um, now, that's, uh, that's at the sort of more nimble end. Now, perhaps at the higher end of the programming that we're doing is our partnership uh, with, with David 
and with Atlantic Productions uh, and this new joint venture that we have called Colossus Productions. Now, the first project that came out of our partnership with Atlantic was a show called Flying Monsters, which I'm hoping some of you have seen. Um, it was our first big factual commission. Um, pleasingly, it won the BAFTA for Best Specialist Factual Show, so it's the first time a 3D show had ever won a, a main BAFTA. Uh, and it was also the first big project that David had done away from the BBC in sort of 40 odd years. Uh, and really, one of the big attractions for him was working in the space of 3D. Uh, you know, David is a, is, he's, he's a complete legend. And I've got to say, yes, everybody at Sky feels hugely privileged to have the chance to work with him. Um, he was the guy who launched the first ever colour TV channel in the UK when he was controller of BBC Two when it launched. Uh, and even at that time, people were questioning, saying, why would people want to watch television in colour? Isn't black and white good enough? Seems um, fairly odd now when we look back. But he's also gone on to win BAFTAs, I think, in you know, black and white, colour, HD. You know, he's, he's made shows throughout the development of television. Um, Flying Monsters is, was, was a great start. We did a show called Bachelor King at Christmas, which um, I don't know if you recall the footage of the penguins, but that involves some pretty complicated filming uh, in South Georgia. Uh, next up is Q, and then at Christmas, Galapagos, and that partnership is something we are going to push on. Uh, and you'll hear more from, as I said, more from Anthony and his team around the Q show this afternoon. So we kind of figure that the ingredients for success in 3D um, and how Britain can really make a key role in this is three key areas. And going back to one of the reasons why I think that this conference is a very good thing is because it has stories at the absolute heart of what you need to make successful 3D. We, you know, the number of times that we have seen shows presented to us or tasters of shows presented to us which are you know really pretty good 3d quality but the subject matter is just it's boring it doesn't matter how many d's you've got in front of it it's probably an f so um uh you know stories is absolutely fundamental and it is the first question when we look to go and commission a show we say what is the story why should the viewer care? Why should I, as a viewer, give up my time to engage myself with this program? And if we can be convinced that it's going to have the right script, the right cast, the right narrative, you know, all those sorts of elements that make good TV and good storytelling, then we think very, very carefully about the 3D. But without a story, you don't have a program. Um, the people side is fundamental, right? You have to think very, very differently when you make 3D programming compared to 2D programming. The level of planning is far, far greater. Something like Flying Monsters was storyboarded through literally every scene, pretty much like a feature film. And that is one of the reasons why it works so well. We, to be honest, we've been involved in projects where the planning wasn't right and you know, it, it didn't look as fantastic as it could have done. So we're still learning, but I would say you need to be thinking carefully, you need to be planning, you need to be picking the right people, you need to be training the right people. And I think it's great that skill set are involved in this whole space because Britain does have some of the most experienced 3D producers and stereographers anywhere in the world, but we need more of them. And we also need to kind of keep our advantage as a, as, as, a, as a set of islands up there of keeping our standards high. You know, at Sky, we have some pretty arduous technical specification kind of quality control levels that you have to hit to, for us to approve for your show to go on air. And it causes lots of problems. And there are lots of kind of moments of heartache and pain. But we're doing that for one very simple reason, is that customers expect the best particularly when they're paying for TV. So we have to give them the best possible stuff, and we will always push to do the best possible programs. Um, partnership is the third for the theme, because I think we've all got to work out how we collaborate, how we make things happen. So that is something that we are really, really pushing as hard as we possibly can. Alistair Lazelle and the, uh, you know, the program around the Queen and the Treasure House is a great example about how you can partner. Um, we are happy to, to share information, to work on ideas collaboratively. Uh, we are delighted to be working with everybody from you know, uh, different production companies through to different channel brands. So I would say partnership is absolutely key. And I think that if we take advantage of these opportunities, so if we think about what are the great stories and events, who can we get to bring these stories and events to life, and what are the partnerships that we need to go into to make these things really, really work, then I think that 3D has a very, very good chance of being something very special and very, very enduring. So 
We are very positive about 3D at Sky. We think that the growth of the sector is actually pretty pleasing. Um, you know, even in the last couple of months, post Christmas, we've seen a real uptick in sales, and we're very happy with where we should be. And actually, given the economy as well, you know, it's it's a pretty pretty pleasing place to be because encouraging people to buy a new television when there's concerns around unemployment, inflation, all those really fundamentally important things, it makes people think twice. But um, I hope that gives you a feel for what we're up to. I hope it gives you a feel for the fact that actually, despite a lot of the noise out there, a lot of the polarizing debates, that actually 3D is in a pretty good place. And perhaps most importantly, for all of us in this room, Britain is really driving this 3D television space. We have a huge opportunity to actually make a real impression internationally. We're, well, we're already doing that. But I would just say that we need to kind of keep on our game and keep on pushing forward. Keep on, you know, at Sky, we have a tagline of believe in better, which is always like keep on doing it better than the last time. And I think if we do that, then I think 3D is very well placed. So I'm going to stop waffling on. Um, I'm going to ask you if you put your glasses on just for another minute and a half, and we'll show you a quick clip of the upcoming Masters. Well, it's not upcoming Masters. It's a promo for the Masters. We're not that good yet. We can't um, do it ahead of it happening. Thank John very much for the uh, talk that he's given, which uh, he used the word waffle. It's not a waffle, it's inspiring. And these three key things which are on the screen are the things which mean that this conference, this event has importance. These are the things we are going to continue to talk about during the next day and a half. Thank you very much for kicking us off. Thank okay, you. thanks a lot. Cheers.